Can you see my screen? Do you see um, some write ups on an A4 sheet on my screen? Yes, madam. Yes, please, you can see. What do you see on the what do you see on my paper? Let me see. Let me see. Uh, I see wish. Okay, that's fine. So um, I'm coming. Uh, but please, can you zoom it a little bit? Yes, I'll do that for you. Okay. So I want to discuss with you ratios. Is it okay now? Yes, yes, please. Yeah. Okay. So is. we will. Great. So ratios are an ordered pair of non-negative numbers, okay, which are both non-zero. So we have, we have we've mentioned keywords, numbers. Both numbers are not zero, and they are not negative either. The numbers are not zero, okay. So ratio can be written as um we have a colon b. E. This is one form, and then we can also have a over b, and then we can have a to b. So which of these, any of these three forms, you can write your ratios. Write something as a ratio, all right. Um, so we are saying that ratios are used to represent relationships between two quantities. So the relationship may be part to part, part to whole, or the whole to a part. For example, let me share a different screen. I, I don't want to. I want to see some animations, so let me share. Give me a moment. I'm trying to share a different screen. All right, so do you not see a PDF? Please, yes, please. Wait, yes, yes. all right, so let's continue. So we want to, we've defined ratio, and we are saying that for the example where we have A is to B or A over B or A to B, to indicate the order of the numbers. Now the number A is the first number and then the B is the second number, okay? So each number we will call it 10. All right. So ratios are used to represent relationships, as I said earlier on. Um, an example would be the ratio of ducks to frogs. So look at how many ducks do we have here? One, two, three, four, five. And how many frogs? One, two, three, four. All right. So we'll say the ratio of ducks to frogs, in this case, is five is to four. Okay. And the ratio of ducks to the total, the ratio of ducks to the total number of animals here is four is to nine. because we sorry it's five is to nine there are five ducks one two three four five and the total number of animals here are nine one two three four five six seven eight nine so we would say that the ratio of um a moment so we'll say the ratio of total the ratio of total Sorry. So the ratio of total to dax is 95. We are saying total to. So total is the first number, dax is the second number. Total is 9, and dax are 5. So we have 95. And then the ratio of total to frogs is 9 to 4, because once again, there are 9 total animals and then 4 frogs. So when it's possible, you should reduce the ratio to its simplest form, all right? So if you have a ratio like two is to six, you should simplify it to one is to three because it can be reduced. But when you now make it one is to three, you cannot further reduce it. So the order of the numbers is important to the mean of the ratio. If you interchange the positions of the numbers, they will mean something different. All right, there's an example here for us. There are nine apples and 13 oranges in a food basket at the grocery store. What is the ratio of oranges to all? 
if you have an answer, put it in the comment section. I'll look at it. There are nine apples and 13 oranges in a fruit basket at the grocery store. What is the ratio of oranges to all fruits? We have some responses. Someone, so we want to know nine apples, 13 oranges. Ratio of oranges to all fruits. Total fruit is um 13 plus nine is 22. So ratio of oranges to all fruits, I expect it to be 13 is 22. Right, so we have people giving us a response. There are eight adults and 15 children at the park. What is the ratio of adults to children? Eight adults and 15 children. So ratio of adults to children is what? Do you have anybody writing the answer? Eight to 15, right, thank you. So the ratio of adults to children is eight to 15. Once again, we have, there are nine cups of pretzels and four cups of popcorn in the snack mix. What's the ratio of pretzels to all items in the snack mix? So all items, we have, we're gonna add nine cups of pretzels to four cups of popcorn, and that will be 13. So the ratio of pretzels to all items would be um, 9 is to 13, right? So that is what we have for this one. Great. I like how fast to give the responses. It makes it very easy. So this is what it is really with ratios. All right. So we can, we can create equivalent ratios. Well, how do we do it? We will simply multiply the first number and the second number by the same factor, okay? So let's look at the ratio two is to three. I remember we said the ratio can also be written as two over three. So if you take the ratio two is to three and you multiply the first number, which is two by five, second number also by the same factor, which is five, you are getting a new ratio of 10 is to 15, 10 over 15, okay? So you can, you can create equivalent ratios this way. So we are saying that the ratio two is to three is equal to the ratio 10 is to 15. Furthermore, if you see how a particular ratio, you can divide it or you can simplify it by dividing the, the first number and the second number by the same factor. In this case, the factor is five. So 10 divided by five, giving us two. 15 divided by five, giving us three. So we are saying in essence that the ratio 10 is to 15 is the same as the ratio two is to three. Okay. So once again, it's been reiterated here that ratios have to be written in the most simplest form that you can write them. Okay. So for example, group scaling lessons might be set up with a ratio of one instructor for every six students. That doesn't mean that there is only one instructor, no. However, we are saying that for every six students, we expect there to be one instructor to um, supervise what they are doing. So in the case where there are 60 students. How many instructors do we need? We are saying that one is to six. Okay, one is to six. So how many instructors do we need for 60 students? You can you can present your answer, but think about it. So one is to six, ratio is one is to six. We have 60 students. How many instructors do we need?
All right, so um, let's get back to this particular question. One is a six, there are 60 students. I want to share the right board. Do you see my whiteboard? No, please. You don't see? No, no, please. We can't see. Um, can you see now? Yes, we can see now. One is trapped today. So I can write this also as one over six for writing the, the ratio. Now, in the case where we have 60 students, what do we do? So the student is what is in the denominator. How did I get from six to 60? How will I reach there? I can multiply six by 10, and that gives me what, six. And we, remember, we have to multiply both numbers by the same factor. So I have to multiply one also by 10. And then one times 10 is giving me 10, okay? So in essence, I'm saying that I need 10 instructors in the case of 60 students. Great, so those who presented 10, you are right. So let's go back to the um, notes. Okay. So let's try something. Write these ratios in the simplest form. So ratio five out of 15, I'm expecting it to be one over three. One over three, right? And then the ratio, yeah, yeah you're right. <laughs> the ratio 20 is to four. I'm expecting it to be five to one. Am I right? right. Yes. Okay. Yes. Then the ratio six to 24 is going to be um, one is to one is four. four. Yes, one is to four. Great. So we'll do the same. Okay, we are saying write an equivalent ratio for each ratio. So what, what could you possibly write for one out of seven? One is to seven. I, I want an equivalent ratio. Ten is to seventy. Okay, so ten is to seventy. I can also have or I can also have two is to fourteen. So this person multiplied each of them by 10. I multiplied mine by 2. Let's look at 5 to 3. 5 to 3. Um, we can have 5 times 3 will be 15. 15 to 9. Great. 15 to 9. Or what? Other options are 20 is to 12. is to 15. Oh, great. So you can mute yourself now because of the feedback. Mute yourself now, okay? Generally, when you have a response, I prefer that you write in the comment section. I will look at it so that we don't get a feedback. Someone gave us 25 is to 15. And that's also correct. Thank you. Okay. So we have all, I have to claim this thing. <laughs> Okay, so let's proceed. Use what you know about equivalent ratios to find the missing part of each ratio. So this is just more and more examples to ground your understanding of ratios. The first one, three out of 15, will be equal to six out of what? Five. Out of five, sorry. Will be equal to, it will be equal Ten. to. Six out of five. Okay, sorry, I don't know. It will be equal to six out of 10, great. 10 out of 20 will be equal to- One out of two. One out of, one two. Out of two. I think you get it, so I'm proceeding. Okay, so let's look at- yeah, we are not more, we are not really looking at equivalent ratio. We want to look at proportional ratios, okay? They are also equivalent. Why are we saying so? For example, look at the ratio 4 out of 16 and 5 out of 20. 
They are proportional because 4 out of 16 can be reduced to 1 out of 4. And again, 5 out of 20 can be reduced to 1 out of 4. So because they can both reduce to the same simplified ratio, we'll see that these two ratios are proportional. Okay. Okay, so I believe that when it comes to ratios, the understanding is okay for now. I will share this document with you when I'm done. Hopefully you can make some time to go through it, but it's not a difficult concept. Okay, so let's move on to the other thing I want to discuss with you. So here's the case where comparing ratios where they are in different, they are in different me measuring schemes. So here we have letters compared to many letters. In this case, you have to change both ratios or both elements into the same um, metric, okay? Metric of measurement. So in this case, you can you can change the letters to many letters. So they'll, they'll be in the same metric of measurement. Then you can reduce it to find the ratio. All right. Okay, so let's move on. Now I want to discuss with you standard form. Okay, standard form. If you have a number and you have been asked to change it to a particular standard form, how do you go about it? First of all, this year we have indexes, okay? The index or indices of a number. So from a, probably from a senior high license, we renew that if you have a squared, it simply equals to a times a. And when you have a to the power three, it simply equals to a times a times a. All right, so this is indices. Hmm. Okay. So all these are indices. I'm, I want to move on to the standard form. Eight here. Can you see question three? Eight here is equal to two to the power. Three. Okay. Great. And then hundred will be equal to ten to the power. Two. Right. Okay. So that's okay. I think you get it. But if you have a question, please do all to ask. Okay. Do all to put your question in the comment section and then I'll respond to it. Okay. Great, so here we are, standard form. Okay, so standard form is a convenient way of writing very large or very small numbers. Very large could be- Madam. Hello. Madam, please, I have a question. Um, the, can you please go back to the law of indices? Great, okay. Yeah, yeah, so that we know the laws of Great. indices. I didn't think you needed it, but once you are interested, we can look at it. Where is it? All right, so we are here. So there are three rules that should be used when working with indices. Three of them are given. When M and N are positive integers, okay? We are saying that A to the power M times A to the power N is equal to A to the power M plus N. So this is how I used to remember. Whenever I see multiplication, will always go with addition. And then division will go with subtracted, all right? So once I see um, it's the power m times, it's the power n, I know that it, I can use the same base, which is a, and then the numerators will add, they will add themselves. Okay, so, um, yeah. So here we have it, it's the power m times, it's the power n, 
giving us a to the power m plus n. In the case of division, the, the indices are going to subtract. So we have a to the power m divided by a to the power n being equal to a to the power m minus n. Division can be written in this fraction form. is the same thing. But take note that m must be greater than or equal to n. Okay. Here we have the case of a to the power n. And then now everything is also being raised to the power n. What happens is that the numerators here, the indices here are simply multiplying each other. All right. So if you have a to the power m, raised to the power n is going to be equal to a to the power m times n. Okay, I'm zooming. Thank you. Thank you, madam. Yes, I hope the zooming is okay. All right. So let me move the standard form right away. Okay. Okay, so standard form is a convenient way of writing very large or very small numbers. Yeah, so large could be 100 billion or small could be 0 0.00000000037. Okay, that's a very small number. So we will want to look at examples. If you have, before using standard form, revise multiplying divided by pi of 10. If you have three times 10 to the power four, you calculate, what would you do? Usually you pick your calculator and then you just put this in. in. Let's proceed. But in opening it, we're saying that three times 10 to the power four is equal to three times 10,000. 10 to the power four means you're talking about four zeros. So here you have one, two, three, four, which is four zeros, all right? And then eventually this is giving us 30,000. Second one is 3.27 times 10 to the power three, so we have 3.27. Remember, 10 to the power 3, so we're expecting three zeros. So 3.27 times 1,000. 1, 2, 3. All right. Now, when you're multiplying such something like this by such a figure, once you're multiplying, you're going to move the decimal point to the right by the number of zeros there are. So decimal point is here. There are three zeros. So I'll start moving. Let me use the pen. I'm going to start moving, okay? There are three zeros, so I'll move to the, it's multiplication, so I'll move to the right three times. So I have one, two, three. Great. Now this other one here, there's no number, so I'll put a zero there, all right? So eventually it's going to give me, as you can see, three, two, seven, zero. Because I've moved the decimal points to here. Three, two, seven, zero is the same as three, two, seven, zero, point, zero, zero. So please, let's take notes. Okay, so it is the same for the others, okay? All right, so when we say standard form, we mean that a number is being written in this form where we have an, a, an integer. This, we, have, we have the integer A being be from one to 10. So any number from one, where one is part, but 10 is not part. So the number could be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. All right. But 10 is not part. And I'm saying that N2 must be an integer. So 10 to the power, whatever we have here must be an integer. It should have to be that one, two, three, four, all the way to whichever number. But it has to be an integer. So we, are, we want to take some examples here 
we, are, we want to write the following numbers in standard form. The first one is The first one is 5720. Write the following numbers in standard form. 5720. Now remember the decimal point is here. Okay. It's after the zero because it's a, it's a whole number. So what I want to do is remember the form is A and A must be between 1 and 10, but it can be 1. So A times 10 to the power something. All right. So what I'm going to do is, remember, a, a must not be an integer. It just has to be a number between 1 and then 10. So it can be a decimal, whatever, but it has to fall between 1 and 10. So it can be 1 also. So in this case, I'm going to, then I'm going to move my decimal point to the left to a place where I can get a number between 1 and 10. So I'm going to move, start moving 1, 2, 3. At this point, I have 5.720. So I have 5.720. I can ignore the zero after because the zeros after the decimal like that. Trailing zeros, I can ignore. I'm not done. Now I have 5.720 times what? 10 to the power something. So 10 to the power. How many times did I move to the left? Three times. All right. So this means that when if I want to rewrite this, I'm going to get back the original number. This is the original number. If I want to rewrite this, what's going to happen is that I'm going to multiply this decimal 5.720 by 10 to the power 3, which means I'm moving the decimal point three times to the right. And that's supposed to be 1, 2, 3. And I'll get back my 5.720. Okay. The next number, writing in standard form, what do we have? We have 4.73. I can ignore the zeros times 10 to the power times did I move to the um there's my point was here all right so to get 4.73 I moved one two three four five so 10 to the power five okay eventually this is what I'm I get or what I expected to get okay so the next number is 0 0.09 0 0.09 here to get the number we are going to move to the right because the number this is a number 0 0.09 is less than one, but my, my number must not be less than one. So I'll move to the right two times and I'm getting nine, which is between one and 10. So I'm right, times 10 to the power what? Now remember to get back this, I would, I, I had to move to, to get back this, I will have to, if I have nine times 10 to the power what will give me 0 0.09, which minus two. Minus two because this time around, in the first two examples, I'll have to move to the right. That's why it's positive five. But in this case, I have to move to the left two times to get 0 0.09, okay? So that then, once I move to the left, I'm getting negative two, okay? So this is how we are going to, we go about this. Look at this particular example, 7.4. 7.4 already is between one and 10, as we have here. But I still want to write in standard form. So what do I do? I write my 7.4 times 10 to the power what? Zero. Because we know 10 to the power zero is one, all right? So 7.4 times one is going to give me back my 7 point. Will give me back my 7.4, okay? So here is how we go about it when we are dealing with standard form. I need to erase everything here before I come to the next page. So I'm erasing everything. All right. So I believe the rest is all about examples, 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 okay? So the most important that I need to let you know, I have communicated to you. Now, the final thing I want to mention is here. All right. Significant figures. Can you see my, can you still see my screen? Yes, please. Okay. Yes. Great. So when it comes to significant figures, there are rules to the game, okay? What matters is that you acquaint yourself with the rules. I know that your time to the exam is very short. Um, 
we intended to have this class last week thereabouts, but it, it didn't happen. So let's just see how far we can go with this particular one. You just saw a few examples and I'm sure you'd be very comfortable with it, okay? So we are saying that data figures are scientific measurements. And we are saying that scientific measurements are reported so that every digit is certain, except the last, which is estimated, okay? So they are just rules that you need to know. Once you know them, you are good with significant figures. So we are saying that all non-zero digits are always significant. So once the number is not zero, it is significant. For example, 1.54. If I'm supposed to, if I ask you, so how many significant figures does this have? We would say it has three of them because there is no zero in here. You can see one, five, and then four. The second example has two significant figures, all right? One and two. Now we are saying that in zeros, zeros between non-zeros are also significant. So if you have a number zero, that, that is lying between two or more, that is lying between non-zero non numbers, we count that zero as significant. Look at the first example. We have 0 0.02503. Zero, zero. They are not, they are zeros and they don't lie between any two non zeros. So we don't count them. So we start counting from two. We have two, five, but this zero lies between two non zeros. So we count it two. So one, two, three, four. So now we have four significant figures. Okay. Now look at the other one. We have four, zero, two. Because zero is lying between two non zeros, we say it has three significant figures. The last number has one, two, three, four, five, six, because these two zeros lie between two non-zero numbers, okay? Now the third one is leading zeros, zeros at the beginning of a number are not significant. This rule, I believe, is just similar to what we just did, leading zero. So this particular zero is, is a leading one. It begins a number. I so would simply you align it with the second one. Because it's not lying between two non-zero numbers, I won't count it. So I'll start from... One zero, one two three, one zero and three. These are the three significant numbers. The same for this. All these numbers, they are leading zeros. They don't lie between a. They don't lie between significant numbers or non-zero numbers. So there's only one significant number here. All right. Now number four is saying that trailing zeros, that zeros at the end of the number, they are significant if and only if there's a decimal point present in the number, or they carry over bars. They are not significant otherwise, okay? So trailing zeros, <laughs> that is zeros at the end. Remember, we finished dealing with zeros at the beginning of a number. Zeros at the beginning of a number are not significant. But zeros at the end number are significant on the condition that that number is a decimal. Once the number is a decimal, then we are saying that that zero is at the end of the number is significant. Don't pay attention too much to the bar. We won't be looking at, there'll be nothing on question, no, no question on the bar. Focus on the decimals, all right? So the case where you have 1.050, there is a zero at the end. We call it a trailing zero because it's at the end of the number. We are considering it as significant because the number is a decimal, all right? So here we have one, two, three, four, four significant figures, okay? Look at the case of, um, The case where it is not significant, we have thousand. Thousand it has just one significant figure because thousand is not a decimal number. There's no decimal point in there. One minus zero two is has only two significant figures, which is one and nine. Because this last zero, we won't count it because the number one nine zero is not a decimal number. There's no decimal in there. All right. Wait, the final one may not be so necessary. So let's move on. Really, this is the main thing I want you to know, being able to figure out how many significant figures they are in a number. So let's try these examples. The first question one. So we'll take together.
Okay. How many significant figures are in each of the following? A. 3.405. How many are they? Four. Oh. Then B. Three. We have 0 0.0028 now, so they are four. Now for C, how many are they? Two. Try it again. Somebody else should give me another option. C. Four. Any other option, please? Three. There are three of them. Great. So remember, one is we all know, three four, is we all know. Now, this zero is lying between two non zero, so we will count it as such. But this zero is a trailing zero, and the number here is not a decimal, so we will not count it. Okay. So in this okay. case, this zero will not be counted. Out. So we have three significant figures. Okay. And we are not considering Let's look at E. 102.00. How many city packages are there? Three. Try it again. Someone else. Try it again. Five. Great. There are five of them. Now, why five? Do we know this zero five. is fast? We all agree. But these two zeros, they are trailing zeros. However, the number is a decimal. So we will consider the two zeros. Okay. Great. Look at F. 0 0.00090. How many? Significant figures are there. Three. There are three of them. Then finally, 9.0. How many significant figures are there? Two. Someone, you can try it again. Mm -hmm. three. 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 So there are three. There are three because even though this zero is trailing, the number is a decimal. So once the decimal, we, we count three. trailing zeros as. Okay. All right. So I hope is there any question for me on these examples? Any question for me? Yes, madam. Um the example D, why was it cancelled? D no, I'm not I don't want you to focus on such it's a said that it's a question in the standard form, but I don't want you to focus on it. I'm not <laughs> yes. That's why I cancel it's okay. If okay, it matters, I will, um, I will let you know, but it doesn't really matter uh, in this case. So. Okay. Any other question? Uh, Madam Pisa, I have a question. Go ahead. Um, Madam Pisa, what if you have a figure like um, 1000.00? 1000.00, right? Yes. 1000.00. Hmm. I don't think... <laughs> oh. <laughs> You are tempted to say there are six of them, but thousand point zero is the same as thousand, isn't it? Yeah, probably. Let's just say, according to the rule, if the number is written as thousand point zero zero, you will say that there are six. If it's written as just thousand, there are one. Period. Okay. Oh, okay. 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 Yeah. Thanks. 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 You're welcome. You're welcome. It's one. Any Okay, for me. Let me clean my things and then move on. I think I'm already done. So at this point, if you have a question on this topic or any of the previous things we have done, you can go ahead and ask me. I'm done. I'm now what I want to share with you. So give me all your questions. Let me help you out and then we will end. 